right, gang, this is Ron from ITMagicKey.com. I'm here with one of my students, Katron. Uh, he's currently a uh, truck driver, but soon to be uh, much, 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 much more in the tech field. So Katron, could you please introduce yourself to your cousins? Okay, definitely no problem. Um, welcome. How are you guys doing? You know, as you said, my name is Katron. I, shoot, I've been uh, truck driving for about what? Since 2012? I believe and been doing it a long time. So, you know, it was one of my dreams. So I think it's definitely something I could cross off the list, but, you know, I feel like with that is something that's ran its course. And, you know, IT is like the new thing that I want to get into now currently. So, you know, that's exactly what I'm uh, doing right now. And I happen to come up on, you know, your courses and, you know, here we are today. My right. man. So here we are today. Okay, Tron, can you do me a favor and just scoot a little bit closer to the, uh, to the phone? Okay, is that better? Yeah, yeah, a lot better, my man. All right, so um, really fast, or however long it take you, uh, what made you to, what, what was the decision that you made, or why did you make the decision to get into IT? Well, so I had three, I had uh, three goals I wanted to do in life. One was go to the NBA, you know, didn't, that one didn't happen. Two, it was a split decision between uh, truck driving or IT, and you know, a lot of people might not know this story. You know, fiance knows the story. I flipped a coin, and I said best two out of three. It was really, and honestly, IT really kind of wasn't a part of that. It was either do something different, and that IT could have been that because it was something I wanted to do. I actually really wanted to roll into ITT techs. So I thought that was big back in the day, or uh, just continue my basketball career. And it, it wasn't a basketball career, so I went with that. So um, I ended up doing truck driving, but what got me into IT was I was always been interested in, you know, computers and technology and the way things work. So yeah, I guess that was just something that I, uh, like a, a passion of mine or a hobby that I wanted to just, you know, basically fulfill. So what got me into that was definitely this, it was definitely that passion I had. Got you. So what, what position did you play um, in basketball? Well, growing up in a uh, in high school, I was always a little taller. I'm like six four right now, so I was always taller than everybody. So they kind of had me playing down low, but I could play guard. So basically, I played like the three. But then when I went to you know my college, I played the one. Okay, got you, got you. Okay, went guard. So, what made you choose the certification pathway that you chose? Because you're working on A plus right now, right? Yes. So what made you choose that? Um, be honest with you, I had an interest in uh, getting into like cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. so like that was going to be the next, like there's something big. And I think I ran across somebody who was in cybersecurity and, you know, just from the outside looking in, it looked like, you know, they were doing pretty well for themselves. And I felt like that would be a, a, a booming career, I would think in, in the future. So I really didn't know where to start, but I spoke with the um, instructor and she was telling me, you know, this would be the route to go, which was the CompTIA A plus, Net plus, uh, Security plus, you know, and venturing it, uh, making your way up to towards uh, cybersecurity. So that's really how I got started into it. Okay, you know, got you. I was somebody. So being a truck driver, uh, you say you got a fiance, um, also a baby on the way, right? Yes, and a son. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I already got a kid, got a kid on the way, uh, got a wife. Mm -hmm. um got a full-time job so with all that uh, what's been the hardest part of your journey so far as far as trying to get certified trying to figure out which world to go oh that's easy definitely time management mm. and um you know just making time to study you know that's probably for sure the hardest thing to do because you're doing so much you know so many other things so you know luckily you know for me in the situation that i'm in even though i might have all those uh Things I got to take care of, responsibilities. Um, there, at least the trucking job that I have, there's a lot of like downtime. So they could be loading me or unloading me. It usually takes typically an hour, hour on up, 30, 30 minutes on up. So mm -hmm. with that 30 minutes, you know, I have my iPad or I have my cell phone with me. So I log on, you know, to your website and just, you know, just watch the videos. So oh, that really been helping me out or whatever's like on my mind, like, as far as IT, I just look into it. So that's, you know, really how I've been trying to take advantage of 
the downtime that I have. So I feel like by the end of the day, if, when I get home, if I'm still too tired to actually go study, I know I did something productive, you know, during the day. Okay. So time management, you said time management is one of the hardest things that you grapple with trying to find time, trying to find the right time. Mm -hmm. Let's go back just a little, little bit really quickly. So why are you, cause you know, most truck drivers make pretty good money, you know, decent money uh, or good money. So yeah. what's making you want to pivot away from uh, driving trucks? Oh, that's, that's a great question. Uh, what's making me really want to pivot away from it is just kind of like a, a lifestyle change. Uh, you know, working in, in, a, in the trucking industry, for the most part, your days are, you know, damn near 12 hour days. And I'm working local and my days are 12 hours for the most part, you know, 10 to 12 every day. So I got to be at work at eight. I, I try to get off at six, but sometimes I don't get off at eight. That's the whole day, you know, gone, done. So, and that's me working local. So when I was over the road, I wasn't coming back. I was gone minimum three weeks to a month, you know, out on the road. So definitely a lifestyle change was definitely gearing me towards on IT having a somewhat more of a, I won't say normal, but more of a, a social life. Okay. So with the, with the over the road, right, you said three weeks to a month. Is that three weeks to a month? And then how much time do you get off when you come back? Or you don't get time off? Or how does that work? Well, it, it depends on if you know, you're know, you an owner operator or, you know, the carrier, <clears throat> the carrier, which is basically the company that you're working for. I mean, it, it's tough. A lot of companies make you have, or tell you to stay out for one week. And as you're out for one week, that equals one day home. So if you stay out for three weeks, then when you get back, you have three days. You stay out for a month, you have four days. So okay. tough. So, you know, a lot of drivers don't typically like that. You know, I never was a fan for it. I felt like if I go out for 30 days, I'm gonna need at least a week. That's right. Like that. So um that's the pros and the cons to it, but yeah, that's definitely a big con. Gotcha. It also led me to, you know, thinking about a different lifestyle. All right, so um Fast forward back to where we was at. So time management, um, you got a family, you got a job, you're doing over the road, you're doing local, you got to pick this up, got to do this, um, got to pay attention, got to make sure you don't run into nobody, got to make sure that you uh, drop the load off on time, got to make sure that you, you know, you're eating, sleeping, all that type of stuff. Now you're doing all this stuff and you already got a gig, you already got a job, you already can pay the bills. Um, while you're studying, looking for A plus or looking for jobs or trying to figure stuff out, did you ever think about quitting? You know what? You know, I think that probably runs through everybody's mind. You know, the thought of quitting, maybe I should just give it up. Because, I, you know, I feel like, um, you know, especially going into A+, plus, this, just when I compare, like, the salaries, mm. the salaries were a little different. You know, especially with what I'm doing right now, I'll be making more than, you know, starting from the ground up. So I, I thought, um, the thought of quitting definitely crossed my mind. But at the same time, what definitely overwrote, overwrote, overrid that was the fact that I want to make a change. Mm. So by me making a change, I know that there's going to be sacrifices within that. And obviously a pay cut would be a sacrifice, but, you know, as motivated as, as I am and determined as I am, that pay cut, no, that pay range would only be there for a little bit. And I believe that, you know, within IT, you probably can make more. If well, I would assume you definitely make more in that versus, you know, trucking. So that would be a, a correct assumption. So um, some people have a struggle because I understand you got kids, you got bills. I was like, oh, I can't take a pay cut. But um, as you already know, um, trying to make it to the NBA or trying to do all that type of stuff, um, you're not going to get, you know, the big contract as soon as you come into the NBA, unless you LeBron or, you know, or KG coming straight out of high school. It's just not going to happen. You got to put in the work. You got to pay your dues. So um, this is kind of the same thing. You got to think about it. Uh, you're brand new. You're new. Um, things are going to take a while, but not that long. So the good thing is in trucking, a lot of times I say that you're making, okay, what do you think? What's a good salary in trucking? Uh, just so I'm not speaking out of my, uh, you know, speaking out of my, uh, out of my behind. What is a good salary uh, for uh, a truck driver? Um, I guess it kind of depends on, what you, what you would deem as good. My goal was a bare minimum was a thousand a week. So I do the math on what that equals hourly, a 
but I would say a thousand a week. And there's been jobs. Well, I think one of the, probably the best jobs I had was hauling fuel. Mm -hmm. I have all my, um, endorsements for that. And just for the company I was working, which wasn't the best company, I was starting off at like basically 27 an hour. Okay. And then, uh, 30, was it 37 or 38 with, uh, with overtime and after all that. So I thought that was good. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, let's just say, let's just say 60, $60,000 a year, right? $60,000 a year uh, would be a good salary for a truck driver, right? So um, let's say, let's use a real world example. So I got a guy that was um, literally a dishwasher. He was making, I think, $14 or $15 an hour. So he had to take a pay cut. He got A plus and he take a, had to take a pay cut from $15 an hour. So he made $13 an hour, right? Just to get his foot in the door, just to uh, start out. So a lot of people are like, oh, well, let me turn this damn video off. This ain't for me. But um, he literally only paid or made $13 an hour for two weeks. He made $13, $13 an hour for two weeks. Once the employer found out he was certified, found out he actually knew what the hell he was talking about, he bumped him up to 18, and within six months, he was making right around 70000 Now, that is uh, not everybody. I can't guarantee what's going to happen to you, but I just know for sure, speaking from personal experience and a bunch of students that I've taught, the ceiling and the possibilities in IT are limitless, you know, if you're willing to work for them. Now, a truck driver, you make 60, that's kind of like, boom, that's where you at. Uh, with IT is limitless. You know, I got, I've made over, you know, six figures working a job. I had students that made over six figures working a job. And it's a lot, a lot of times, a lot less intensive than driving uh, a truck. Um, you don't have to damn go uh, over the road, which is a new term, never heard that before, but you know, you ain't gotta go over roads. You ain't gotta stay somewhere for three weeks and then come back in. You get three days off, which is crazy. You know, good. You know, I want to say kudos to you, man, for feeding the family, holding it down. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, but um, and that's one of the reasons, one of the driving forces, um, a reason why I do this. Um, if anybody's following me for uh, any certain amount of time, they should know by now I'm not full of shit and I don't like to seem like I'm full of shit. So um, anyway, uh, I went off on a tangent, but um, I think that and I think you're going to find out really soon, you know, hopefully I can, you know, rock out with you throughout your journey, you know, when you become um, a network engineer for NASA, that, um, you know, the earning potential is um, is limitless. So um long story short you were willing to take a pay cut just because pretty much sacrifice now because you knew it was going to happen i guess eventually later on exactly yeah definitely i mean you said like that story you just said the two weeks you know that's his story but yeah you know hearing hearing uh stories like that for me is definitely motivation motivating okay you know, got you you want to um, you, want, you want your own story that's right that's right um now uh going off just a little bit we all know who Elon Musk is. Uh, there's other couple, uh, another couple companies out there that's trying to automate um, the logistics and the truck driving um, industry. So I think that's way, 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 way far off. But um, did that play any part in um, your decision to get an IT? That maybe one day um, that I won't be driving a truck. That maybe you know because a machine, I don't need to pull over. I don't need to go to sleep. Uh, supposedly, it's smarter than us. Um, it won't crash and calculate stuff, blah, blah, blah. You know, you can literally have stuff clicking for 24 hours, even though you only got three days off. Uh, it doesn't need any days off. Did that um, factor into your decision to hop into IT at all or not really? Well, if you would ask me that question, I would say nine, you know, nine years ago, whenever I started driving, nah, it definitely wouldn't have, you know, popped in my head because I was really just kind of focused on, I guess, me. And, you know, whatever was going on around me, in the sense, didn't matter. That's right. But as I got older and, you know, you start to see, and I won't even start with the truck industry. I would start with people who work in warehouses and things like that. Like they got machines that are doing their jobs and they're losing their jobs. And they're, you know, definitely, you know, complaining about that. You know, you got, even with Tesla, at some point that car might really be driving itself the mm -hmm. whole way. So you know, technology is definitely changing. It's taking over people's jobs. I, I think even in the, um, uh, what's that called? The industry of uh, making cars. I forget the, the term for it. But they're in assembly yeah, line. Exactly. Assembly line. They're already by using uh, computers and all like automation, like what you're saying. So change is definitely coming. So if I see the changes there, what would make me think that it wouldn't happen, you know, here where I am as far as the trucking? I think it might take a little bit, like it's probably a little bit ahead of his time, as you were saying, 
but I definitely believe it's coming. So I guess as you get older, maybe as you get more mature, you start thinking about those things on where you want to be, because I wouldn't want to be someone who gets left behind or get kicked out or not being able to get a job because I didn't get the education and I seen the signs of things changing. So, you know, one thing my pops always taught me that's like, uh, I've stuck with my whole life and it's something I'm going to teach my, you know, my kids is do something that the world calls, uh, do get a skill or a trade that the world calls for. Mm. Be out here just doing with nothing, you know, so. Yeah, that's, that's, that's completely true. And then a lot of times, um, like I said, everything is a business, right? Okay, it's cool. We love you. We like you. But Amazon, for example, is a business. So Amazon currently employs a bunch of people to put stuff in boxes and to take those boxes up. But just like you were saying, Amazon uh, is at the forefront of automation. Uh, at a lot of the warehouses, the robots, there's robots that put the stuff in the box, uh, scoot it over to where it need to go to. And a human is only there just to see if it put the right stuff in the box. And eventually I think a lot of those repetitive type jobs are pretty much going to be obsolete because you got to think about it's the bottom line. They ain't got to pay insurance. They ain't got to uh, worry about you complaining. They ain't worry about you crying. They ain't worry about you getting hurt. The machine will be there all the time. And I'm not saying it like oh, I'm for machines or, you know, wow. Skynet, the Terminator is coming, but it just, it is what it is. Um, and then, like you said, you have to pretty much just see what's going on. Self-checkout, that's automation. You know, it's just real simple. Everything is getting automated. Um, you know, eventually there will probably be um, automation at restaurants where, you know, a machine or just drop the fries, drop the burgers, so on and so forth. So it's good to be on this side of technology as opposed to pretty much getting replaced by it. Um, grocery stores, they got self-checkouts now. Yeah. Cashiers. Yep. Um, I said this, I think, uh, maybe the last time we talked or in some interview, uh, Walmart um, does not uh, only have three cashiers because they're lazy, right? Because you know you go to Walmart, it's a thousand people. Like, damn, they got all these uh, they got all these registers. Why the hell is everybody at? It's because they know, like, okay, how many damn people do we really need in here? So it's a thousand people in the store. We got three cashiers, and most people going to self checkout. You know, it's pretty much just um, a test that they run. Um, so um, as far as A plus, um, I know you haven't taken you haven't taken an exam yet, right? Okay, well, no big deal. One, I failed it. So then damn it. All right. So tell us about that. That's that's perfect. Cause it because it happens. That's perfect. That's uh I failed uh, A plus the first time. Um, and as far as learning, you know, failure is a part of learning. And some of you know the best lessons come from failure. So uh if you had to put it on one thing, what was the reason that you failed the exam? I would say if I had to put it on one reason I failed the exam, I think it was maybe um not studying the right information. So, oh, so you didn't fail it when you was with me? No, no, not with you. Perfect. Great. I, mean, yeah, you um, <laughs> I thought you felt it when you was with me. No, I went to a school, um, New her. I mean, I don't know if I want to put the school out there. but No, nah, no, let's, let's, no, no, don't, don't put it out there. Yeah, I, won't, I won't debunk them. But uh, I went to a school and the instructor, <clears throat> he was a great instructor. Like you could tell he was very passionate about his work. But, you know, only knock I would say on him is he told you about everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything. Like, he wants you to know every single thing, which kind of made it overwhelming. It would, would I think, in a way, kind of, like, scare you off. Like, oh, man, if I don't know this, I'm not going to be ready for it. If I don't know that, I'm not going to be ready for it. So I guess, in a way, I kind of felt like it was just too much information mm -hmm. that I had to learn. But, you know, I said, well, let me give it a shot anyway. I missed it by a little bit. I think maybe if I'd have got a couple more questions right, then I would have passed it. But, um, no, nah, I definitely failed it. And um, I was upset, but, you know, you know, I'm, not, I'm no quitter. So, you know, definitely got to just keep going, take that in. As I know, everybody fails something at some point in life. You know, you, you're probably not just going to pass everything. If you do, you know, kudos to you. But if you don't, it's not the end of the, it's not the, end of the world because you failed a test. That's right. Yep. Um, and that is one thing that people um, find hard about A plus is because it is a lot of information, right? Uh, even the material from directly from CompTIA, you would think that, oh, this is the this is what I need. But uh, CompTIA covers everything, everything. Right. So let's say literally, let's say it's over 100 topics, right? Over 100 topics on the exam. So you drilling down on certain stuff and looking at certain stuff. 
you always have to revert back to it's only 90 questions on the exam. So it can't be all of this stuff. There's no way I, all this stuff can't be on there because it's only 90 questions. So a lot of times, like you said, it depends on the instruction and um, what's actually covered because everything isn't on the exam. And even if it is, you may focus a bunch on this and then it's only two questions on the damn exam and you forgot about the rest of the stuff. So uh, sticking with A+, plus, if you just, you know, you got a cousin or you got a homeboy, you got somebody that you notice, hey, man, I'm going to take A+, plus. what's something I should really focus on? What, what advice would you have for them? Uh, if, I, if I was uh, to ask or to tell them the advice I would give would definitely be like, you know, the, the way you broke it down in your course, but uh, troubleshooting. I would mm. say you got to know how to troubleshoot and just know the categories. I would say definitely look at the categories that are going to be on the test and, you know, just, just know that, just know, know, know that and not, not going, you know, too much into it. Cause I remember also one thing that my instructor said that we for sure had to learn was subnetting. So in that loop, no. or loop, I'm like, Oh man, I got to know this. this and uh, He you set know. you up for failure, man. That's that shit is, I mean, cause that's why I said inside the course, um, like it's cool to notice, but it's not going to be on the test. It's not going to be on the test. Um, now for network plus, when you go ahead and tackle that, you need to know net uh, uh, subnetting, but not so much because that's because that's one thing um, that I can say with me teaching so many people and having so many courses is that I kind of know you know what people need to know and kind of see what people kind of get hung up on. Uh, somebody will be rocking out and loving it, and then as soon as they see them numbers with the subnetting, they'll literally forget everything else and they'll focus directly on this because I don't know what it is about the brain, but when something is hard, it's like this got to be what's going to be on the test. The, yeah. This simple stuff that I'm getting can't be on the test. It's got to be the subnet stuff, got to be these numbers. You know, people are scared of math anyway, but you focus on that via super subnetter and then go in there and take an L when you take the exam. So everybody's listening, uh, take it from me, take it from K-Tron, uh, subnetting, just know exactly, just know what it is. You don't even, honestly, you don't even have to know how to subnet for A+. plus. All right, just skim over that. If you're taking a networking, um, if you're taking a Cisco uh, exam, or if you're taking um, Network Plus, you need to know that stuff, not so much for A+. Plus. Um, so how long do you think somebody should study before actually trying to take A+. Plus? Um, I would definitely think it would probably depend on the individual. You know, I think if you grew up around technology or messing with things, you probably for sure have like a, a, a gr great foundation in it. Like, you know, I'll give you a quick example. My brother, he he build a computer from scratch and I'd be asking him little questions, little, and he already knows the answer. I'm like, man, you need to go take the A plus. And he's like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. And here I am studying for it. Da, da, da. And we grew up the same. So mm. I think it kind of just depends on the individual and, you know, how passionate and how interested you are for it. But I wouldn't say it should take you no longer than depending on how much time you put in it in a month. You know, I, I think that's, you know, great. Time. That'd be, would that be both? parts because if you don't know what a plus is it's a two-part exam do you think katron that you should be able to knock out both in 30 days or 30 days a piece i'll give you some some uh some leeway give you 30 days a piece but yeah i think you definitely knock it out in 30 days but yeah <clears throat> got you so um got some good news great news that you gave me before the interview so uh mistake me if i'm wrong but you don't have any certifications, never worked in IT, right? Correct. All right, somehow, uh, Katron, and he's gonna tell us how, um, actually got um, an offer or something in the works uh, uh, to work at Cisco. So you gotta give us the game, give us the gems. Uh, was it luck? Was it hard work? How did you even get in the same room or even get in the same stratosphere for that to happen? Well, you know, I I believe, you know, definitely most high definitely was looking out for me. Always. So I definitely don't. I kind of fell back. I found a job through Craigslist, first of all. So I kind of fell back on on uh, looking for Craigslist anything. Right. Because, you know, Everybody least, has. Everybody. I don't think you're the last one. Yeah. I <laughs> the last one. So I ended up looking on Craigslist and I seen this opportunity. And I was like, you know what? I'm not doing anything. Let me just put my, ad, my uh, resume in. And I had kind of I had tweaked my resume to kind of to fit what they were looking for. And within the within their guidelines, they wanted someone who was at least uh, what they say uh, computer proficient. So you knew a little bit about the computers. You know, you didn't have to know much because it was like basically simply a, a entry level position. But they wanted you to know something. Mm -hmm. 
so you know I, I took the course and you know I'd already t- I purchased your course and you know finished that so I'm like I, mean, I feel like I know a little bit of something let me put my resume in mm-hmm. and, um I put it in on a um, Tuesday I believe and I wouldn't expect to hear nothing back from you know Wednesday so I believe by Friday I haven't heard anything back from I was like, let me call them you know I mean let me do my due diligence so as I called them they didn't pick up and my phone is sometimes late on emails, but I actually checked my email and they actually emailed me back and were like, hey, you know, we like your resume. We would like to set up a, a phone interview. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, perfect. So they set up a phone interview with me. I didn't know what to expect because I've heard, you know, I've always heard Cisco is big and things like that, but, you know, I didn't know what, what they were going to ask me. So um, one of the first questions they asked me was, what is a network? And, you know, for me to describe what the network was. So I was able to describe that to them. They're like, okay, you know, good, good. And then basically introduce myself and give them a little information about myself. So I passed that first part. The second part was a, uh, like a Zoom call, like what we're doing right now. But it was with another, uh, another person who was going to really be great in me. So he's the one that asked me the technical questions. So I had, you know, within the, the, the interview was going to be, a week later and I was able to kind of do my research and you know from what I found personally I was going to be in it is they were going to talk about the OSI model and you know that's where I was able to use your your course because you know you have like an hour long course on explaining the OSI model and you know the the, um, the components that are that are you know contained within it so that that was that was perfect like I was ready for it and you even had the uh, the acronyms for it you know please do not throw away the uh with sausage pizza and all that. I mean, perfect. I, I, I had that memorized. So I was able to go through the OSI model. But the only difference between that and what I was doing was it was a TCP IP model. So it was a little, okay. but you know, still consisted of the same things. So I was able to explain that to them. They were impressed. And, you know, they, they chose me. So right. they, Patron, let me, let me, because you um, dropped a bunch of stuff. Um, that I think we need to hit back on. So uh, one wonderful thing, one great thing that Katron did was, Katron, excuse me, Katron did was he applied. So if they was going to say no, they was going to say no. And I think that's one thing that you guys need to all try, right? A lot of times with a job, it's kind of more of a wish list as opposed to requirements. We want a damn degree, four years experience. Uh, you got to have um, an old blood type. You got to damn... Uh, be able to dunk uh, basketball, all, all this other uh, stuff, right? So that's just um, a wish list, right? And even if it is a requirement, you uh, applying doesn't take that much time and um, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't, you know, reflect negatively, none of, none of that type of stuff. Um, another great thing that uh, Katron did was that he was prepared for the interview. So most interviews um, pretty much had the same layout, like you said. The first person you talk to is usually from human resources. They're going to say some real surface level stuff, like what is the network? He knocked that out of the park. Like, oh, okay. But then the second person that you talk to is probably actually in IT and actually going to be either your supervisor or somebody working closely with you. And they're going to ask deeper stuff. So if he would have fumbled the ball with the OSI model, he'd been like, because anybody that doesn't know what the OSI model, that is literally the core of, of networking. Like if you don't know that, Mm, it's a wrap. Uh, that's probably every interview you have, they're going to have something about the OSI model. Now, depending on uh, what the position is, it's going to be something deeper. But if you couldn't, if he couldn't explain that and didn't know what the hell it was, you're probably much going to be over with. Um, so um, as far as that went, Katron, is it in the works? Is it for sure? Do you got something or because I think I missed that part. Did you actually get a gig or, or are you still trying to see? I start on uh, the 17th of May. My man, that's what's up, man. So uh katron i want you to listen very carefully please so use this job right they're gonna pay you whatever they're paying you but use this as an education right use this as um education and a networking opportunity right the guy that seemed like he's the smartest you need to pretty much hold on to him try and get any kind of tutelage any kind of questions that you have ask him hey man you got any certification hey man you know because you never know who he knows but like i said this right here can be the foundation of your education and then whatever lane that they have you in, of course, stay in your lane. But every now and again, turn, put your blinker on and get on somebody else's lane. Like, hey, man, you mind if I go look at the server? Hey, man, you mind if I go do this? Hey, man, you mind if I go do this, this and that? And I'm telling you, a lot of times, and that's pretty much the damn 
uh, the guy that I was telling you that was fifteen dollars an hour and got up to you know what he got up to was because of that. He was latching on to people. Any any job that they had, any extra stuff, he was staying after work, coming before work. Hey, let me go get in there with the network engineers. Okay, this is how this works, this is how that works, so on and so forth. But use that pretty much. You're getting paid to get educated, right? So you can get experience and all the other stuff. Uh, another thing to double back something that Katron said uh, when you're filling out your application. Like you said, make sure that the things that the actual application is asking for, um, you actually put that inside of your resume, right? Uh, so a certain keyword, certain stuff that you have to put inside your resume, because a lot of times they use uh, resume reading software and if a lot of keywords and stuff have to uh, link up. You said May 17th is when you start? Yes. Awesome, awesome. That's what's up, man. So you excited or what you think? Oh, man, I'm, I'm super excited. It's an opportunity, you know, like I said, for me to just get out of, out of driving trucks and it's something I've been wanting for a while. So, you know, all I need, you know, all I prayed for was the opportunity. And, you know, I feel like I can make it happen from there. So that's awesome, man. Um, so are you going to be doing dual positions? You still going to be in the truck and this, or are you just going to be doing this solo dolo, just this? No, nah, I'm, I'm solo. I'm, I'm done. I'm going to still hold up, my yeah. license and, you know, never let that go to waste because you never know. But no, nah, I'm done with it. All right, another cheat code, uh, make sure that you're on LinkedIn, right? So make sure that you're on LinkedIn and apply, 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 apply for jobs and start connecting with people that's doing what you want to do. So if you want to be a network engineer, connect with other network engineers. If you want to be a um, security analyst, whatever the hell you want to do, connect with those people on there and then just try and post stuff. It's simple stuff. Hey, first day on the job, boom. You know, and then you'll get a bunch of different comments, a bunch of different connections. Hey, first time doing my trouble ticket, boom, get a bunch of comments. Uh, so, cause right now, right now, like I said, your main thing um, um, is to get education and to um, improve your network and to get more certifications, right? So, like I said, another thing is give yourself a deadline. So, you know, praises to the most high that you got that job, but you also have to have a deadline for that job, all right? So, um, and also, uh, I'm just proud of you. That's why I'm talking so damn much. Uh, and, and another thing is um, make sure you uh, watch who you're getting advice from, right? So somebody has been rocking out a help desk for a year or two, cool. Somebody has been there for 10 years, not so much, all right? There's nothing wrong with an entry-level position, but um, since she was in the NBA, you know what I'm saying, or had aspirations to the um, NBA, um, are you going to take um, advice from a starter or somebody that couldn't make it out of the D league, right? So it just it just depends, right? Like, okay, I know what what it takes to make it. I'm I'm here. I'm at the promised land, and I'll give you the directions as well. Um, but yeah, so I will give yourself a deadline, whether that's six months to a year, uh, whatever. And another thing, like I said, network inside your position. Uh, hey man, I'm about to get a plus. Does that come with a Does that come with a raise, or does that come with different uh, opportunities, so on and so forth? And just like I said, I'll always be looking for um, other opportunities. Okay, no, I definitely appreciate that. You know, because I have a, a LinkedIn, but I know I gotta I gotta tweak it. I gotta definitely tweak it. But you know, definitely, you know, I didn't think about that, you know, first day on the job, stuff like that. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, yep. So just um pretty much have your LinkedIn mirror your resume. This is what I've done, this is what I can do for you. Because that's where you can get a lot of opportunities, a lot of gigs, a lot of different um, whether it's mentorship, whether it's whatever, but uh, Katron, this is pretty much going to be May 17th is going to be day one, you know, maybe the rest of your life. And then you're going to be a lifelong learner. got to learn stuff. And like I said, eventually, you know, in a couple of years, you know, hopefully you hit me like, Hey, you're going to believe, you know, I'm working at such and such. So, um, but uh, I'm going to wrap this interview up, but I want one last thing. I think we gave people a lot of gems, a lot of game, uh, two questions. First one, um, do you think everybody should be in IT? I think that if you personally, the way though, uh, my first answer would be yes. I definitely think everybody should be in IT or have some knowledge of how it works. But I would say too, definitely looking at the way the world is like kind of like shifting and, and going, yeah, you're going to want, you know, some kind of background knowledge in, in it. Okay. <clears throat> so second question, what's one tip? What's one piece of advice that you would give for anybody or somebody that's looking to get into IT? Um, I think one tip I would give would be, it, it, I think it's a couple of tips, but I think one tip would just definitely don't be afraid. You know, sometimes I think people might be afraid of stepping out of their comfort zone or getting out of their, their box or the world that they lived in that might not be IT related. 
and just doing something new. So just definitely don't be afraid, you know, definitely pray about it and just do your due diligence, your research, and it will come. My man. All right, y'all. So this was K-Tron from truck driver to tech. And other than that, I'll see you in class.